I live here. Eighth Man DVD. Cartoon Classics. Good morning. Wake up, everybody. Wake up, everybody. Have you had your tasty toasties this morning? Good for you. And now for our... Uh, 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 don't touch that dial. And now for our morning exercises. Open those windows. Take a deep breath.
three o'clock. <laughs> War savings time. <laughs> Kabloom! Hey, you. Just leave this. Uh, stick him up. I bet you're that old... Uh, sp uh, sp uh, sp well, I'm not so sure that you're Porky Pig, either. There's your license. Can't you see the, the white line? Of, uh, there's the fire. Move along or I'll uh, run you in, Bob. You know, I'm uh, re uh, really getting suspicious of, of, of that guy. Here, yeah, Pig, it is one minute to three. Do you see that little bag? Uh, you mean uh, the, uh, that one? Yeah, at exactly three o'clock, that little... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Music lovers. <laughs> First, we will hear a waltz written by Johann Strauss. <laughs> and as we hear the rhythmic strains of the haunting we flain, listen to the whip wing rhythm of the woodwinds as it rolls a wound and a wound, and it comes out here. <laughs>
Wasn't that lovely? And now we will present the beautiful Blue Danube. <laughs> I just got there 10 minutes to catch my plane. Hold everything, Fasso! Phew. This is your 
lucky day. Opportunity is nothing. Yeah, me, but I've got a, me, me, a very important appointment. I'll say you have. My card. Yes, sir. Daffy Duck, personal representative of the most sensational discovery since the Sweater Girl. He's colossal, stupendous. One might even go so far as to say he's mediocre. I give you that paragon of pep and personality, Sleepy Lagoon. a packed house. The kid's on. The orchestra gives him a four-bar vamp, and the kid gives it to him like this. I'm just wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. Now the heavenly blisses of his kisses fills me with ecstasy. That's just a rough idea, you understand. He's the sweetest chocolate candy, and just like honey from a bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry, and he's just wild about Ken. I do without he is from the south. Can't you hear me shout? Talking with my mouth, could you ever tell? He's just wild about me. <laughs> the kid finishes mid thunderous applause. Hooray! Hey! He takes a bow. They're screaming for an encore. Encore! Give us more. We want more. Let's have some more. Give us some more. Give us some more. Ah, but does the kid give him another song? No. He makes with a band. Solo, like so. Just a minute, Chubby. You ain't seen half of the kids' repertory. Well, here's one the kid does that you like. Woohoo! Over hill and over day, we're always on the dusty trail. Hunting fox and hunting quail, I oh, I am hunting fool. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, my horse and I are of the finest breed. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, just like the wind, I ride my sword steed. Sure of foot, sure of eye, feeling onions make me cry, this makes no sense, so do I. So don't you go and beat me, daddy, to the nearest bar. Yeah! into a finale, and what a finale! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! All right, let's see what the kid can do. Okay, Sleepy, do your stuff. <laughs> Let's bring time. 
my blossoms bloom again in the garden. They'll be shipping us out soon. From the equipment, it looks like the South Pacific. This is confidential. So I'm staking this past the sensor. shots for tropical diseases, so I know it's the South Pacific. Hey, bud, mail this for me. And can't afford the terrible one.
Don't get one cent if you harm any animals, especially wabbits. You're free now with the wabbit. Go and womp and frolic in the forest. Oh boy, I'm rich. Okay, fellas, break it up, break it up. Three million dollars. <sighs> Angel in the sky. Come on out or I'll blow your head off. <laughs> I'm just an angel in the sky. Please, Mr. Wabbit, go on back to the forest where you belong. Be a nice with the wabbit. Ooh, ouch, ouch! Hey, what are you trying to do? Kill me? Are you fracture my skull? I'm gonna call her Louie. That's what I'm gonna do. Operator, operator! Hey, you got a nickel? Hello, operator, operator. Give me walnut tree, tree. Oh, that's you, Mert? How's every little thing? Please, Mr. Wabbit, don't call Uncle Wooey. I won't hurt you again. I promise. Well, okay. But watch your step after this, fat boy. Hey, what do you got to eat around this joint? Eat? Eat? I'll fix this guy. Fate he'll twick me, huh? Step right this way. That'll fix him. <laughs> Why the dirty double crosser? Open up! <coughs> hey, I'm getting pneumonia! <coughs> Open up! <coughs> I'll die! I'll die! No! I'm too young to die! Please! Hey, this scene ought to get me the Academy Award. <sighs> Say goodbye to Uncle Louie for me. Oh. Uncle Louie? What have I done? Three million dollars all shot to pieces. 
don't die with the rabbit. <laughs> Please don't die. Walk a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows your cradle. Come on, that stuff. Swing it. Walk a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will walk. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come, baby. Special delivery. Your Uncle Willie has kicked the bucket. You now inherit three million dollars. Inheritance tax, two million defense tax, big check county, which leaves you owing us one dollar and ninety-eight cents. Please remit. You don't get the dough, Aunt Butterball. No, but I'm gonna get you. Yes. <laughs> Freddy Cat, this is only a tiny little bird. You mean a poor little dinsy wincy itsy bitsy defenseless boy? Yes. Let me at him! Let me at him! I'll get him, baby! Gang, we all mobilize him! Let me at him! Take it easy, take I'll it easy! I'll show him! Where's he get that stuff? Don't hold me back! I'll get him! I'll show him! Come on, quit your fooling. Don't get up that ladder. Don't push me, Abbott! Don't push come on, me! Come on, I'm scared to go up high. I get hydrophobia. No, oh, I don't want to come on. Go. Oh, don't push me. Oh, come on. Don't. You can't make me do it. You can't make me do it. <laughs> he do it. Come on, stupid. Get the bird. Oh. Give me the bird. Give me the bird. If the haze office would only let me, I'd give him the point, all right.
get away up here. Say, Babbitt, are you sure this thing is gonna be okay? Of course, of course. Everything's under control. Don't push me down in a box, Babbitt. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, Babbitt! Oh, Babbitt! Babbitt! What's the matter now? I'm afraid of the dark. Well, I'll let you out then. I thought I tore a putty tan. I did. I tore a putty tan. <laughs> were against you. I'm a flopperoo. I can't even get the boy. Don't worry. You'll get it, all right. You mean I'll get it in the end? Yeah, and you'll get a big bang out of it, too. Well, that sure takes a load off of my mind. What's the matter with you? Aren't you ashamed? I don't know. Why do you do these things? I'm a bad pussycat. Oh, I just can't seem to get the boy. Ain't no use. Don't worry. I can't do it. This'll get you up there. Contact. 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 join the army for a day and get a glimpse of military life. Here we are at Fort Nix, typical of the many training camps throughout the country.
Count. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well, uh, now let's see what comes after three. Four. Four. Now, now, no coaching, please. Uh, now, now don't tell me. Uh, uh, four, yeah, yeah, four. <laughs> That's right. Now, do you want to try for the $32 question? Well, uh, I don't know. I, uh... You'll be sorry. Uh, no, no, no uh, I better take the $16, I better. Sweet music to the ears of all soldiers is the mess call or come and get it. Appetites appease, the army is ready to carry out the orders of the day. One of the most colorful sights is the well trained cavalry as it goes through its daily drills. Company, attention! Mark, tight! Right, face! Infantry is the backbone of the army. Marching mile after mile is a matter of routine for these hardy foot soldiers. Following close behind, the camouflage troops. The artillery tries out one of its new guns. In contrast to the mechanized equipment used by the soldiers of today, early conscriptees were trained with makeshift substitutes. Here are a few examples. The machine gun unit. Bang! 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 The tank core. The parachute troops. The Army Air Corps has proven a vital link in our military chain. During maneuvers, Pursuit planes engage each other in aerial games. Here is the anti-aircraft division in the midst of its daily target practice. The largest guns of the Army are those of the Coast Defense. Directions for firing these huge monsters originate at Army headquarters, many miles behind the lines. Elevation, 45 degrees. Direction, 30 degrees north by east. Elevation, 45 degrees. Direction, 30 degrees north by east. Elevation, 45 degrees. Direction, 30 degrees north by east. Longitude, 36 degrees. Latitude, 58. Longitude, 36 degrees. Latitude, 58. 
Longitude, 36 degrees. Latitude, 58. Ready. 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 Fire. 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 I'm a bad general.
I went down in history. So perhaps there's a chance for me. Have you got any castles that you want to build, baby? Such a lack of good manners, you should swallow my book, Henry. Get out my scissors, that cut. Have you got any mortgages you want to have paid, baby? Celebrants bid us adieu, happy with the memories of the bookland frolic. All is well. All is well. step, and I'll have isolated the virus of the common cold, laryngitibus hackabus. Fosdex, check. Anti-proton ballast, check. Prepare afterburners for blast off.
biggest problem in this job is how to keep from disturbing the parents and getting them in a tizzy. Rock a bye doggy in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. And so, after answering the $64 million question correctly, I decided to take a few trips around the world. About time we threw a little light on the subject. First thing you gotta do is get their attention. Comfy? Have I got your attention? Okay, let's straighten out a few facts about you and the Army. Now then. Oh, oh uh, excuse me just a minute. rock a doggy in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. You know, Ralphie, it's a funny thing. But every high school senior I've ever known thinks that when he gets into the service, all his buddies will look like a bunch of lower Slobovians. Of course, there's always one exception. You. Actually, they're going to be pretty much like the guys you're graduating with. Just plain old characters like Roy Robinson from Jefferson High in Portland, Oregon. Don Osgood from Page, Nebraska. Pete Willoughby, Los Angeles State College. Dick Martin from St. Peter's High in Worcester, uh, pardon me, Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, well. Nice guys who wash their teeth every day, get their hair cut regular, well, fairly regular. Just a neck trim, please. Uh, yes, sir. Just a neck trim. Well, what do you know? There was a human being under that pelt after all. Another interesting idea held by a lot of otherwise bright high school seniors is that the Army has all the right size clothing, but that it's mainly interested in getting it on all the wrong size people. Well, nice comic book stuff. But actually, the Army is no more interested in putting you into the wrong sized uniform than your football coach would be. And for the same reason. It's not necessary, it's inefficient, and it's just plain sloppy. In other words, you'd be pretty useless to yourself or the team. You know, according to some comic strip artists, our fiend here, uh, our friend here, is the kind of non-com you find in the army. The way they tell it, uh, basic training supposed to be nothing but KP, obstacle courses, and being chewed out by a bunch of sadistic sergeants. As a matter of fact, the Army's not about to use inefficient comic strip non-coms or officers any more than it would use outdated or inefficient weapons. No, the non-coms you're gonna get acquainted with in basic will be very capable guys, and they'll be there for just one reason to help you. You'll get to know men like Paratrooper Sergeant Mike Culhane, Master Sergeant Johnny Broderick from Okinawa and Korea, Corporal Tommy Webster, a high school senior when you were a junior, Sergeant Rod McCollum. He carries the Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, look, as long as we're on the subject, let's take a look at basic training and find out what it's really going to be like. few things at basic, useful things, like how to handle weapons safely and effectively. And at 700 yards, I let him have it. You're taught to use a compass, how to read a map. Very impressive stuff later to the girl of your dreams. You'll learn how to pitch a camp and how to give first aid, the sort of knowledge that other uh, people will respect someday. You're also going to develop muscles that'll be useful later. Uh, some you didn't even know you had. But then, uh, it's not a bad idea to keep in shape for recreation, like boxing, football, skiing, and other uh, sports. You're gonna learn to snap a salute to all officers. Now, where'd that custom come from? Well, the way I heard it, the only way one knight could recognize another knight under those cast iron tuxedos was to lift his visor. It's a sort of hello among military men. Then one day you're going to suddenly realize that you're beginning to look like and act like a soldier or a man. 
and you'll be surprised to find that you're very proud to be serving your country in the United States Army. Oh, uh, a short intermission. rock a bye doggy in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Okay, basics finished. Now what? Well, according to some comic strips, more endless months of KP, policing some forgotten post, and learning how to artistically goof off. But mainly, the rest of your army career is supposed to be spent doing anything you're most unfit for. Humorous stuff, no doubt, but not good sense. Actually, the army wants to send you where you'll be most useful and where you can serve the best. Where this will be is uh, determined to a great extent by those interviews and aptitude tests you took in your first days as a recruit. So the chances are that, but wait, just a minute. Maybe you'd like to know before you start how you're going to spend your army career. Maybe you'd like to choose the training you want and not leave it up to chance. If so, then the army has a special deal you'll want to hear about. It's called Reserved For You. And in it, you pick the job training you want before you enlist. The army then reserves that position in the world's finest technical schools until you complete basic training. And now, let's go back to those dreams of yours. Uh, how about laboratory work in the medical field? The Army has some of the finest laboratory facilities, technicians, and scientists in the world. Well, that's just one of 127 courses offered by the Army. How about that dream of working with rockets or atomic power? How about guided missiles? You choose it, the Army's got it. The only ticket you need to this program is one high school diploma. Sound good? Well, I can make it sound better. The whole deal is guaranteed by this letter, written to you by the Adjutant General of the United States Army. You don't sign anything until that letter is firmly in your hands. Fair enough? Let's see, uh, adventure? Pick your branch. How about a real elite outfit? Armor. Tank Commander Phillips. Not bad. Travel? Man, you do ask the nicest questions. This is Paris, and it's no dream. It's solid, and it's yours. Ralph Phillips, USA. Sound pretty choice? Your local recruiter can fill in all the details, today if you like. But remember that you're going to look a lot bigger to the Army with that high school diploma under your arm. Oh, uh, quick warning though, Ralphie. You can only grab one of these special deals before you receive your induction notice. So why not call on the Army before the Army calls on you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You gone nuts or something? It's reserved for you. for this day, so happy birthday to you, the buzzard. Well, no, that's mighty neighborly, the buzzard. What are now, a book? Just what I've always never wanted. Lions rarely live beyond the age of 10 years. 10? 
ten years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kushla McCree. One, two, three, four, uh, five, yep, six, seven. Yep, it's a ten, all right, Leo. Absolutely right. You're not getting any younger, Leo. Nope, uh, no younger. Not getting any younger, he says. Well, I'm not getting any older, neither. <laughs> this on for size. Oh, the everlasting nerve! You can't even wait till I'm decently deceased before you try to devour me. Oh, I know you went and hurt my feelings. I'll hurt more than your feelings, you carnivorous canary. Temper, temper, Mr. Lion. <laughs> You shouldn't exert yourself like that, Mr. Lyle. Come down here, you molten seagull! <laughs> no, 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 I couldn't do that. Oh, no, no. Prepare to defend yourself, then. I'm coming up after you. Be more careful, Mr. Lion. Uh, toodaloo. <laughs> Mr. Lion, I'll get you down. Yes, sir, have you down in a jiffy. Now, 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 now wait a minute. Don't bother yourself at all. I'll, I, I'll be getting myself down. No friend of mine's gonna get himself down. No, no friend of mine. For you. You're never going to get me. Never! 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 <laughs> I fooled him. I fooled him. He'll never get me up here. <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, Leo, what kept you?
house. He might as well eat me now and have done with it. But tis hoping you're talking on me, I am. Oh, I'm sorry, Leo. Uh, I can't eat nothing but marshmallows. Oh, but have one. Eighth Man DVD Cartoon Classics